My favorite tool in trigonometry is the unit circle. In this video, I'm going to show you the power of the unit circle. So, first, what I'm going to do is take our examples from the previous video and just kind of represent it visually. So, you may remember when we did sine of 405. 405 is coterminal to 45 degrees. So we know sine of 405 is the same thing as sine of 45 degrees, which is root 2 over 2. Meaning, at 45 degrees, this is just a circle centered on the Cartesian plane, where I'm re representing my theta here is 45 from the initial position to my terminal position. At angles 45 degrees, maybe in radians, you want to talk about it as pipe fourths. If I were to draw that triangle, I would have some x value and some y value coordinate where that ray intersects the circle. And of course the radius of this circle we've been letting be one unit. So just a reminder, we found that x and y were the same because it's isosceles and that value is root 2 over 2 and because we're in quadrant 1 both of those values are positive. So this coordinate is root 2 over 2. So if I ask you for the sine value of 45 degrees, if I have this circle in front of me, then I know that sine is just represented by this y value. Sine of 45 degrees is root 2 over 2. Cosine is sitting right here. Cosine of 45 degrees, cosine represents the x over the r, or the x value, which is the same, root 2 over 2. So cosine of 45 degrees is sitting right here, root 2 over 2. So the x represents the cosine value, and the y represents the sine value. All right. We also did 150. We found these values. So at 150 degrees, that's this larger angle. Hundred and fifty degrees. I'll talk about converting to radians. Uh, now, now's a good time. So, this is one of those thirty partitions. You got thirty, 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 thirty. So that's um, five thirties. Yeah. I know thirty degrees is equivalent to pi six. So. I can go along the circle and count by 30 degrees, 30, 60, 90, 120, 150, of course a line is 180. I can do the same thing by counting by pi 6. This is 1 pi 6. This would be 2 pi 6. It reduces, I'm going to write it small, but 2 pi 6, which reduces to 1 pi third. Let me start over. 1 pi 6, 2 pi 6, 3 pi 6. Oh, but that just reduces to pi halves. I knew that. Pi halves is equivalent to 90 degrees. Do that process again. 1 pi 6, 2 pi 6, 3 pi 6, 4 pi 6, which I'm going to call 2 pi thirds, meaning then 5 pi 6 is the next. So notice how I just converted 150 degrees to radians. I did not multiply by pi over 180. Instead, I drew 150 in standard position, and then I just counted out the radians. We're going to get really good at this. Okay, but back to finding exact values. If I can find the x value, then I found cosine. If I can find the y value, then I have found sine. If 
I just simply take y and put it over x, that will give me the tangent value. Well, this is a 30, 60, 90 triangle. You can draw it a few times to help you picture what's going on. 150 has a reference angle of 30, making y my shorter side length. The shorter side length is half the radius, so my y value is one half. The x value was that side length being multiplied by root 3. This is root 3 over 2. Now, because the x is going in this direction, it should have a negative value. These are the same values we got when we were looking for tangent of 150 degrees. I'm just now representing this on the unit circle. If I want tangent, I can simply take the y value and divide by the x value. We said that from the very get-go. Tangent is defined as sine over cosine, or y over x, or 1 half divided by the negative square root of 3 over 2. You do some simplification here just like before, and you come up with a negative root 3 over 3. Not sure where I put it. Let's put it here. Kind of sloppy. All right. So I'm going to go along this unit circle, and I'm going to start to take degrees and convert them to radians. So I'm just going to continue with my, uh, let's do with 60 degrees. Every 60 degrees is 1 pi third. So then 260s, or 120, should be 2 pi thirds. Good. Another 60 would get me to 180, which is 1, 2, 3 pi thirds, reducing to 1 pi. I knew that. Another 60 degrees. That's going to jump me down to 240. That's going to count on another pi thirds. 1, 2, 3. This is 4 pi thirds. Another pi thirds will be 5. Another 60 degrees is 300 degrees. I do that once more. I'm up to 360 degrees, which is 6 pi thirds or 2 pi. This is 0 degrees, and it's also 0 pi radians, which is 0 radians. Let's finish off the 30s, or the pi 6s. So 30, 60, 90, 120, 150, 180, 210. That's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, pi, 6. I didn't have to do any multiplication. I didn't have to bust out a calculator and start to reduce. I just counted. Another 30. Another 30. So I'll just count by pi 6s again. 1 pi 6, 2 pi 6, 3 pi 6, 4, 5, 6 pi 6, 7, 8, 9 pi 6, those are both divisible by 3, so we get 3 pi halves. And that should make sense if I start to add by pi halves. Every pi halves is 9 degrees, so 1 pi half, 2 pi halves, 3 pi halves, 4 pi halves. Kind of get how I'm counting. Alright, let's do, I'm not done here. Another 30 degrees gets me to 330 which is going to be 11 pi 6s. Hmm. All right. I'll do the 45s in a different color. 4590 I already have. Another 45 is 135. And that's going to be 1, 2, 3 of these pi 4s. 4 pi 4s. 5 pi fourths, 6 pi fourths, 
reduces. 7 pi fourths. And then 8 pi fourths. 8 divided by 4 is 2 pi. Let's see. 180 and 45 is 225. If I do 15, this is 315 degrees. So practice uh, labeling a unit circle in degrees and in radians quickly. If you need to convert a few times using the pi over 180 or the 180 over pi, do so. But then get to the point where you can just quickly count out these radians. Then convert. I'm sorry, find some of these exact values and start to label these coordinates. Maybe leave off tangent the first few times. Get those cosine values and those sine values. Another one we did was 300 degrees. We found the x term to be a half and the y term to be negative root 3 over 2. That seems very familiar. Half and root 3 over 2. Hmm. Let me think about that. 300 degrees. If I draw a circle, I'm sorry, if I rise up a perpendicular and draw a right triangle, here is 300 degrees, yes. Remember, if I've been asked to find exact values of 300, I would draw out a 300 degree angle looks like this green angle stops there creating this terminal side we would then use the reference angle which is the angle formed by the terminal side and the x-axis this theta would be 60 degrees Oops, even though you may want to think of it as a negative 60 degrees we measure this as a positive angle it's the acute angle. It's always formed by the terminal side and the x-axis. So we have here a 60, 30, 90 right triangle. Meaning, we know these values. If the radius is 1, then the side length opposite the 30, this x value, is going to be half that value. The x here is 1 half. The y value, we know that value. It's going to be 1 half being multiplied by the square root of 3. Now the y value is negative because I'm sitting here in quadrant 4. The half is positive because I'm in quadrant 4. All right. Now I claim because I know this value in quadrant 1, those values of the 45-45 triangle are going to be the same no matter where I draw the triangle. The only difference is whether the x is negative or the y is negative. Like over here at 3 pi fourths or 135 degrees. If I ask you for the cosine value of 3 pi fourths, I'm simply asking you for the x value at this coordinate. Well, I know the x value. That distance is root 2 over 2, but negative. What is sine of 3 pi fourths? The sine value of 3 pi fourths is just that y value. That y value has not changed. It's still root 2 over 2. I can just take these values and just translate them. In quadrant 3, these should both be negative. So I'm now looking at 5 pi fourths. I have negative root 2 over 2, comma, negative root 2 over 2. Meaning sine of 5 pi fourths is negative root 2 over 2. Cosine of 225 degrees is negative root 2 over 2. I didn't have to draw a triangle. I didn't have to apply the 30, 60, 90 rule. I just know those values. If you have memorized this one point on the unit circle, 
and you can quickly translate it to every other piece of the unit circle. Similarly, in 7 pi fourths, you have a positive x value and a negative y value. Tangents are easy here. If I asked you for tangent of 7 pi fourths, I don't have to draw a triangle. I just simply know that tangent is the sine value over cosine, or y over x. Simply this y value divided by this x value. Anything divided by itself is 1, but I have a negative divided by a positive, so this is equal to a negative 1. Let's do this quadrantal angle. This point here, we are not really able to draw a right triangle, but if the radius is 1, then we know this coordinate is 1, 0. That's cosine and that is sine. Sine of 0 is 0. Cosine of 0 is 1. Oh yeah, these are all going to be easy, these quadrantals. This is 0, positive 1. This is negative 1, 0. We did that one. We asked about pi, and we found that sine of pi was 0. Yep. We found cosine of pi was negative 1. Yep. But I didn't, I didn't have to draw a triangle. I didn't have to like figure this out. I just look at the circle in standard position with a radius of 1. This coordinate is negative 1, 0. I'm looking at the cosine. I'm looking at sine. Let's continue. 0, neg 1. So I know that the sine value of 3 pi halves is negative 1. Easy. I'm just lacking... Oh, I put this in the wrong position. Oh, no. That's true, but this is not. Whoops. Color helps here. <laughs> blue goes... I was putting blue in the middle, but then I stopped. Okay, I think I'm done with all the pi fourths. Let me go around and do all these pi sixes. Well, maybe I'd do it once in quadrant one. I mean, I have the values sitting right there, but if I had a triangle, the side length opposite the shorter one is half the hypotenuse, so the y value is one half. Yeah, this y value should match up with this y value. The x value should match up. The only difference is it's going to be positive. Now pi thirds, or this 60 degrees, that still forms a 30, 60, 90 triangle with radius 1. These values are still in play. It's just that they've been swapped. The x is now the shorter side, 1 half. The y is now the larger side, root 3 over 2. You need to draw it out, do so. Here is a triangle in standard position. It has a reference angle of 60 degrees, meaning this purple side that I've drawn straight up and down, the y value. It's going to be the larger of the two. The x should be the shorter of the two. The shorter is half of one. The shorter is one half. The larger is that value being multiplied by eight. Bam! If I know this coordinate, I can quickly convert it to the second quadrant by making the x negative and keeping the y positive. Rotating that, or reflecting that down way over here to the next pi thirds, at 4 pi thirds, I still have a negative 1 half, but now my y value is negative root 3 over 2. 7 pi 6, that's going to kind of match up with 5 pi 6, with the same x value. Same y value, but now negative. One last one to do. It's going to look a lot like 1 pi 6, with a positive root 3 over 2 x value and a negative 1 half y value. All right, let's do that again. Print off another one of these pages, and let's do that again.
in the classroom setting, I typically have my students practice this over and over again, and then I give them a five minute unit circle quiz. So you have access to um, this unit circle. Maybe I can post it in like the video notes below, but my students have it in their documents. Print this off, practice, practice, practice. You're trying to get this um, embedded in your brain so that later in the semester when I do ask you for cosine of five pi thirds, you can just quickly recall it. At this moment, what you can do is you can refer to it. If I ask you for cosine of five pi thirds, you find it, bam, the cosine value is the x value one half. Nice and easy. So if you can basically implant this in your brain, memorize this, later when I ask you, cosine five pi thirds, you just kind of picture a unit circle, you go, there's five pi thirds, the cosine would be one half. Let's practice. Pause, practice, see how, time yourself. I'll see how I'll time myself if I can. Just counting. If 60 is 1 pi third, the next 60 will be 2 pi thirds. You'll start to see some patterns. This is 5 pi 6, and then this is 7 pi 6. I know this one over here is going to be another 6. That's that 11 pi 6. I know the 4s are always in the middle. 3, 4, this is 5 pi 4. Mm -hmm. Again, that degree symbol is pretty important here because we're moving away from degrees. So when I write down 3 pi halves, that's radians. If you put 270 without the degree symbol, I'm assuming you think that's also radians. If this is 5 pi fourths, that's 6, this must be 7 pi fourths. Alright, then these coordinates, they should be easy. The quadrantals, 1, 0, 0, 1, neg 1, 0, 0, neg 1. I know the 45 degrees is that root 2 over 2, and they're equal. That's going to be true for all of the fourths on the unit circle. I just got to keep track of the negatives. So here the x should be negative. Here everything is negative. Quadrant 4, the x should go back to positive, but the y should remain negative. Now for the 30s and the 60s, it's the same values, 1 half and then root 3. The shorter is the one half, the larger is the root three over two. So when I'm looking at this point, I've got this side length, and then I have this larger side length. So the x is larger here. That must be the root three over two, as opposed to the shorter y value, one half. It's visual. That one half should make sense. If this y value is one half, then two one halves will give me this y value of one. So it should kind of make sense. Now 60 degrees, it's the same values, but you interchange them. 60 will go, will pair up nicely with 120, but the x is negative. 
the pi 6 will pair up with the 5 pi 6, but the x value will be negative. The 5 pi 6 will kind of reflect down to the 7 pi 6, where the x's remain the same, but the y value goes negative. Same with the thirds, x's remain the same, but the y's are now negative. So I did that in about four, maybe, yeah, four minutes, in under four minutes, and I was kind of explaining some stuff along the way. So fill this out, practice. You do need to know where these values are coming from. So if you need to convert them a few more times, do so. But once you understand where these values are coming from, learn to count by radians, learn to quickly fill out the unit circle. Then. Do that homework again where, you can, where you're using the 30, 60, and the 45, 45 rules to come up with these values over and over and over again. Once, you have, once you're familiar with those values, you can basically just memorize quadrant one and then just quickly fill out a unit circle. Practice, practice, practice. This is the meat and potatoes over, over the next few um, for the next half of the course. So uh, get these values down, start to memorize them, practice, practice, practice. While I've got your attention, what is the... Let's do something hard. Co-secant of negative pi thirds. Looks really scary. I don't need to draw a triangle. I'm just going to refer to my unit circle. First, I need to find negative pi thirds. So I start on the positive x-axis and I go in a negative direction. Negative pi thirds would be here at negative 60 degrees. Negative pi thirds is coterminal to 300 degrees. It's coterminal to 5 pi thirds. This is this ray right here. This ray is intersecting the unit circle at this coordinate pair, where this is the x value and this is the y value, meaning this is the cosine value and this is the sine value. I've asked, or I've been asked for a cosecant, which is the reciprocal of sine. So I simply take this negative root 3 over 2 and reciprocate it. If sine of negative pi thirds is equal to a negative root 3 over 2, then cosecant of negative pi thirds is the reciprocal. Negative 2 over root 3. I've got the value. I should probably rationalize it though. Multiply by root 3, top and bottom. Negative 2 root 3 over 3. Whoa. That was easy. Let's do it again. Let's do something like this. What is secant of 13 pi thirds? Okay, well, the hard part may be finding 13 pi thirds, but I can count. 1 pi third, 2 pi thirds, 3 pi thirds, 4 pi thirds, 5 pi thirds, 6 pi thirds, should get me back to 2 pi. 7 pi thirds, 8 pi thirds, 9 pi thirds, 10 pi thirds, 11 pi thirds, 12 pi thirds, 13 pi thirds. 13 pi thirds is coterminal to 60 degrees and coterminal to pi thirds. Because it's in quadrant one, the reference angle is also 60 degrees. But 
13 pi thirds is referring to this coordinate pair that intersects the unit circle. That terminal ray hits the unit circle right there at one half comma root three over two. Secant is the reciprocal of cosine. Cosine is this x value. The reciprocal of one half, a lovely two. Secant of 13 pi thirds is two. I didn't do any calculations. I didn't do any math. I just referred to my unit circle. Go practice, practice, practice.